Now, Kamala Harris did finally sit down and have an interview. It was with CNN's Dana Bash. Uh, this is the first time in, what, six weeks since she was installed as Biden's replacement that she's finally done an interview. It was a softball interview, it has to be said. It was pre-recorded. Walls was there sitting, I don't know, acting as a chaperone of sorts. Um, now, this is what worries me. This next clip I'm going to play you is part of the 18 minutes that made the cut. I would love to see what they didn't put to air. I mean, if this incoherent word salad was good enough to put to air, what was edited out? The climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. There you go, deadlines around time, because I don't know what other deadlines <laughs> there are, Alex. Uh, will we ever see the full tape? Uh, I think we deserve to see that. I mean, that's the least CNN can do. They sent in uh, a lefty hack who gave a softball interview. The, the least we can do is at least watch the unedited version. Well, you and I both know, Rita, we're never going to see the unedited version. And that's what we call the collusion news network, CNN, because they're colluding with the Democrat <laughs> Party to try to, you know, influence this election in Kamala Harris's favor. You know what I thought was so weird? It kind of reminded me of being a little kid on my first day of school when I didn't want my parents to leave. That's what it felt like. It felt like her dad was in the room. And if you know anything about Kamala, she doesn't have a great relationship with her father, which is kind of unusual considering how successful she's become. So, you know, it's just really sad that we have a person that could potentially be the leader of the free world that can't even do a non-live interview by themselves. Absolutely pathetic. Uh, Dana Bash also did an interview with J.D. Vance uh, not too long ago, and uh, she brought a different energy to that one. You guys seem to be struggling a little bit. Kamala Harris has been calling the shots. Says who? There's no evidence that Kamala Harris threw him overboard, called you and Donald Trump, and that is weird. Sure. You're saying Tim Walls doesn't have affection for his wife? I don't even understand that. They they have done both. They have both policies, and they are trying to, uh, it, to it, define yeah, you as well. If you, if I wanna, you, you have been on the campaign trail questioning Tim Walls's military record. Governor Walls served 24 years. Sure. He even stayed after he could have retired because uh, of 9-11, more than the country asked of him. Do you honor his service? <laughs> They're not even subtle about it. It's almost funny. Now, Nancy Pelosi was on Bill Maher's show last week, and the former Speaker of the House, who remains enormously powerful within the Democrats, admitted that they'd like to turn illegal immigrants, undocumented migrants, as they call them, into documented migrants. Uh, and creating an easy path for citizenship, I'm sure, is going to open the floodgates further. Making the... Uh, American dream of home ownership available to all people is something we have to do for people before who are here now. Of, this is before, before you're a citizen. Hmm? This is undocumented. Hmm? This is for the undocumented. Well, what I would like to do is move them to documented. The fact that we can move them to documented. And one of the best things that we can do for our economy is to pass comprehensive immigration reform. It's part of the plan, isn't it? Uh, there's a reason why they dismantled Trump's tough policies and we've seen record numbers come across that southern border illegally every single year of the Biden administration. They're hoping that uh, one day they become citizens, one day soon, and vote for the Democrats. Well, it's not only that, it's also a big scheme for BlackRock, for these real estate companies, knowing that these people can get these houses because they're subsidized by the government and then they default on the loans and then these banks will basically own these houses. And then once they give these tax breaks or you know they give this, these monies for this money for these free homes, that raises the price for everyday American citizens that are trying to buy a house. So this program is killing the middle class and they know that because they don't want a middle class. They want a population that relies on the government or just a super elite that doesn't need the help from the government. The government needs their money as a matter of fact. Now, Kamala Harris thought she was being very clever when she denounced former President Donald Trump for disrespecting sacred ground at the Arlington National Cemetery. The former president went there at the invitation of Gold Star family members. This is family members of service uh, personnel who were killed during the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. Harris called it a political stunt 
probably because neither she nor President Biden accepted their invitations. Uh, they weren't there. Biden was at the beach. Uh, I don't know what Kamala was doing. She released just a statement. She had no public events that day. It's, but now they are being absolutely smashed by their families here. The, the, the denouncement has spectacularly backfired on her and the campaign. Uh, so many Gold Star family members are reaching out to Trump's campaign, filming videos and setting the record straight. Kamala, your statement is nothing more than a political spin. Why did we want Trump there? It wasn't to help his political campaign. We wanted a leader. President Trump and his team were respectful. They listened to our stories and didn't talk much at all. We welcomed them that day and they were comfort to our family. That's just a, a few of the, the videos that have uh, been released thus far. And Alex, it's really shameful, I think, of the media to go down this road because by trying to smear Donald Trump, they were also smearing these families, these grieving families who the Biden-Harris administration has pretty much abandoned. And they're accusing them too of politicising this tragedy and Arlington National Cemetery. And it went so far that they've all uh, decided to come out and speak out against this fake news. Well, it's important that they did that. You know, uh, to be fair, is this a political stunt? No, but Donald Trump is running a political ca political campaign, so it's important that he goes out there and does these events, yet they're too afraid to leave their basement, just like Joe Biden's uh, presidency in 2020 when he was running. So it's really sad for them to try to demonize these Gold Star family members, uh, the family members of our fallen and injured soldiers. That's how disgusting these people are. And if Kamala Harris actually cared about her vets, she would do something about the 22 veterans that commit suicide every single day here in America. So they don't care about the veterans whatsoever. And Donald Trump actually does. Now, before you go, I've only got 30 seconds. I hear you're going to be in Fort Worth, Texas, one of my favourite places, with Tucker and Roseanne, Tucker Carlson and Roseanne Barth. Is this happening? Is he, is, what, is, what is your life these days, Alex? My life is wild. I'm good friends with Roseanne. She's a party animal. You know, she was telling me about how she used to hang out with Chris <laughs> Farley. So she's as seasoned as it gets. And Tucker Carlson is my biological stepfather. He's letting me open up, do 20 minutes of his sold out show. 13,500 tickets are sold for September 24th wow. in Fort Worth, Texas at Dickey's Arena. So thank you, Rita. I love Dickey's Arena. That's, uh, I wish I was there. Alex Stein, thank you so much for your time this evening. Have a good one.